Potatoes, everybody loves them. They can be mashed, fried, boiled, even raw. In the early 1840s, the Irish thought the same. In fact, many peasants relied almost exclusively on potatoes to keep them alive. Potatoes first came to Europe through the Columbian Exchange. Side note, they were brought across the ocean by Sir Walter Raleigh as a gift to Queen Elizabeth I. Their popularity grew due to the fact that they were such a hearty and nutritious crop. Potatoes soon became a staple in the Irish diet. Plus, bonus, they could grow pretty well in the Irish dirt. Yay! But then, they all died. <sighs> Potatoes, dead. All of them. Well, not exactly. You see, back in ye old Ireland, the potatoes went through quite a bit before they were all dead. There are a few basic reasons why the potato crop failed. One, the lack of diversity. It made it much more vulnerable to the spread of disease. There is only one type of potato, the lumper. A water mold, one that I can currently can't pronounce, infected the entire crop. Not to mention the unusually cold weather that slowed agricultural production. These two factors combined to collectively wipe out all of the potato crops for about four years, leaving the populations devastated. Sadly, the population of Ireland quickly fell from 8.4 million to 6.6 .6 in a matter of years. Although the famine itself caused many, many deaths, no one knows for certain how many total casualties there were. Another reason for the rapid population drop was emigration. Many of the Irish, mostly the peasants, fled Ireland after their favorite crop rotted in the fields. Their favorite destination was the United States. With the famine continuing to be more and more widespread, the government needed to apply some reforms to Ireland. Sir Robert Peel, yes, it's true, his last name is Peel, proposed that there should be large shipments of maize and cornmeal delivered from America to help the starving masses. Unfortunately for Peel, those ships wouldn't arrive till much later due to unfavorable weather conditions. But when they finally did arrive, things only got worse. For the crops that hadn't already gone bad from the ship ride, the Irish farms were having difficulty due to the fact they weren't accustomed to growing corn. Cornmeal wasn't enjoyable either. Many Irish citizens claimed it was upsetting their digestive systems. Peel tried again. He campaigned for repealing the Irish corn laws that made bread so expensive for peasants. It took quite a while before the laws were re-peeled and the famine worsened. Peel's reforms were seen as inadequate and he was removed from office and replaced by a Lord John Russell, who practiced laissez faire economics that did little to help the Irish plight. During the time of the Great Famine, the Irish and English were butting heads in conflict that led to the Irish being subjected by the English. Once the potato caught on, Irish farmers started to grow enough of them to survive off of, as well as paying off the Englishmen to leave them alone. Yes, they paid them off in potatoes. So naturally, when the disease hit and all the potatoes were gone, chaos ensued. Peasants couldn't pay their rent, which made it really hard for the landowners to support them, which meant they couldn't pay off the English landlords. The landlords and the British government sucked the Irish dry with taxes, taking whatever crops they did manage to grow in order to feed the higher-ups. This le left the Irish farmers impoverished and potatoless, more like foodless. Soup kitchens popped up all over the place, and by the end of the famine, nearly three million people relied on charity for survival. By 1846, 3,500,000 pounds worth of potatoes had rotted away in the fields. That's about $4.5 million for you Americans. And that's also $4.5 million in 1846, which, because inflation, etc., is worth about $136 million today. That's $136 million lost only on potatoes. That's a lot of money to make a big dent in the economy, and a lot of potatoes to make a huge dent in the Irish population. The famine was hushed due to the limited electoral franchise. 
Also, the emigration of many Irish speakers to America caused for there to be bubbles of the traditional Irish language in the places that the refugees settled in groups. The vast majority of immigrants were Irish Roman Catholic, which clashed greatly with the English Protestants of the time. However, one of the biggest contributions the famine gave to Ireland was the huge wave of art about it. Whether it be songs, poetry, or paintings, there was a bolder cultural movement, especially from the poor class. The poor class, like many regions alike, felt a sense of unity and rebellion towards those who wouldn't help their conditions, spurring nationalistic movements with a famine as its base. Personal Accounts from the Irish Potato Famine From the Montreal Gazette, September 5, 1847 Excerpt on the quarantine station where many emigrants disembarked In the hastily erected emergency sheds, the people were dying by the score in the crowded sheds In the stench and the heat desperately neglected when there were enough attendants, they were hastily tossed into shallow pits nearby when they succumbed to the fever. In all the history of Montreal, there is no story so poignant. There were hundreds of orth orphaned children. Many of the little ones had to be pulled from the arms of a parent who had suddenly died. Older ones were wandering around, frantically looking for parents who were already bu buried in the pits. The scene in the children's shed was beyond description. Taken from an Irish newspaper, December 16th, 1846. Famine and its remedy. Our accounts from the northern parts of this country are most deplorable. What the poor people earn on public works is barely sufficient to support them. All their earnings go for food, and the consequence is that they have nothing left to procure clothing. Since the extreme cold set in, sickness and death have accordingly followed its train. Inflammation of the lungs, fevers, and other maladies resulting from excessive privation have been bearing away at their victims. Many have died in the course of last week, and the illness in every case was traceable to the want of clothing and firing, if not of sufficient food. How does the Irish potato famine influence the rest of the world, you may ask? Well, this world event marks a change in not just Ireland, but in American states, such as Massachusetts and New York, as well as surrounding countries. America had a significant influx of migrants who changed the cultural fabric of the United States. In fact, famine immigrants were the first big wave of poor refugees to ever arrive in the U.S. Irish famine refugees tended to settle in really bad conditions under unjust landlords, suffocatingly small tenants, alleyways, or even backyards or gardens of Yankees that were already settled in the area. Sanitation was terrible, which made the Irish slums even more susceptible to the spread of disease. Cholera ran rampant, especially in Boston, killing 60% of Irish children born in the New World by their sixth birthday. Those who didn't pass away early oftentimes ended up in roaming the streets as beggars. Meanwhile, the famine refugees were competing for local openings of unskilled labor to try and support themselves and their families. Also, because of anti-Irish sentiment, many employers were very suspicious of the Irish and paid them very unfair wages. The influx and flood of Irish famine migrants to the U.S. diffused and mixed cultures from across the sea, as well as make a uniquely American-Irish culture as the migrants struggled to get by. Meanwhile, in Britain, before the Great Irish Potato Famine, we already said how the Irish were kind of subjected by the British, etc. Once the famine hit, the Irish were fatally crippled economically past a point of recovery. The Great Famine made it certain that Ireland would never again pose a threat to the English powers economically and militarily. What did we miss by not covering this topic? Was it unjustly neglected? The Great Irish Potato Famine is a great example of how much people, both in ur rural and urban areas, relied on agriculture in the 19th century. 
It also points out how the Colombian exchange influenced European society to depend on the potato for food and economic reliance, as well as demonstrating how easily a population can change for the worse because of a natural disaster. The Irish potato famine is so significant because it influenced millions of lives by taking away loved ones, sucking bank accounts dry, making people flee to America, and try fruitlessly to set up their lives again. And it also caused violent turmoil in the economy and social structure of Britain, as well as the change the demographics there and in America where Irish refugees settled. Why choose this topic? Well, one of our members is Irish, but other than that, it was a very significant event for developing worlds. It marked a period of mass immigration and the beginning of refugees moving to America in hopes of a new life. It showed how closely the poor farming class relied on agriculture to pay off their grumpy landlords and to get them started on the road to economic independence. The Great Irish Potato Famine was a quite unfortunate happening that resulted in the death of around one million people and an event that forever changed the lives of several million others, doing its part to shape the world into what we have today.